Hi, true believers. Uh, this is uh, James along with Reggie from uh, Reggie's Take. That's uh, Take. Take. Yes. Reggie's Take. Oh, not Reggie's Tape? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, well, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was playing on a little bit of a reference to what you're going to go with. Here. Oh, man. That, that went over my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sorry. We'll edit this out later. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so right now we're doing a uh, two-part of... Uh, of uh james bond uh this is part one of two and um the reason why i chose to do this is because marvel comics did a um did a uh, two-part comic uh rendition of the james bond classic for your eyes only back in the 80s um we're not really gonna do anything with the comic we might reference them here i just purposely wanted to use them because to do a two-part because that way i'll have two nice thumbnails for my videos so anyway are, are, uh, yes and no uh the with all the legal stuff i don't know what they can do like it was just you a, know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah it, it's just a kind of a stupid question well but they did uh marvel actually did the, uh a comic for dr no back in the 60s okay um which I don't have. I wish I did. I'm sure that's worth a good 20 bucks or whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, because comics are worth so much money. But um, for your eyes only uh, was the second one they did. They also did one for Octopussy, and they might have done one for one of the Pierce Brosnans. I'm not sure. Um I probably, even if I come across the Octopussy one, I'm not sure if I'd even buy it. Um, <laughs> the movie was terrible. I'm sure the comic wouldn't be... The comic, well, probably would be better than the movie, but uh, there you go. Um, mostly we're going to talk about, for part one, we're going to talk about mostly uh, Spectre. Uh, we're going to kind of review it and talk about it. I know it's been out for a couple weeks now, but, you know, whatever. Uh, we're going to talk about Spectre, and then we're going to talk about um, mostly the Daniel Craig movies. Have you seen any of the Daniel Craig movies, Reggie? Um, let me see. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's see. Second best actor to play, James Bond, kick-ass movies, uh gorgeous body if you're into that kind of thing no i haven't I, I haven't seen a damn one of them <laughs> um and even second best actor like him he might be the best like well, i know that's blasphemy but the only reason you always I, want to give connery number the one. only reason i say you know second best is connery i mean i think if it wasn't he for, created the character uh, he, he basically you know. made the character come alive to what it is and yeah. and and gave it that certain nostalgia to it he'll always be number one no matter what but i mean that's like craig kind of gives him a run for i mean that's like life. anyone who says you know whoever might play a younger version of han solo in the in, in the in the in the anthology movie for han solo they're going to do i mean that's like saying you know harrison ford's second best playing han solo i mean you'd just be like i wonder if han solo is going to shoot second throughout the entire <laughs> trilogy of that movie <laughs> oh i can't oh, i'm a smuggler but i can't shoot you until you shoot me first yeah that's gonna be a long trilogy if that's how <laughs> it is um god that's so stupid i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> like there, there's no way around that like yeah anyway whatever <laughs> we've i think there's enough complaining about that on the internet that we don't really need to do that um, so Daniel Craig started with Casino Royale. Um, have you ever read any of the books? Actually, I have not ever read any of the Ian, Ian Fleming books. I've read, um, I want to read all of them. I've only gotten through the first five, honestly. Now, and, now uh, I, they're, I've been trying to buy the rest and get them all. And I'm going to reread the first five when I finally get the whole series. But I've, uh, now I've come across a few books that were written, in the style of Ian Fleming for Bond by other writers. Yeah. But I have never actually read any of the books ever written for any of them. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever read those. I don't like, know if I'm I would not. I'm just not really interested in reading someone else's I, take on Bond. Yeah. Like, that's what the movies are for. You know? Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, they might be good. They might be. And I'm sure, yeah. I mean, someone had to get permission for someone to do it. So You know they did that with Jason Bourne also? Yes. Yeah. Because that's because, well, well, actually, both writers are... Or, or past, but 
I uh, my dad has one of those Jason Bourne movies by the second author, I believe. Oh, the books. I yeah. might read it sometime. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how well those things translate as far as if it matters writer to writer in a book. If it's uh, that big a deal. I don't know. I mean, you know, like you know, we talk about comic books and like. I mean, because with every with every character except uh, Spider Man and Fantastic Four, basically, with those two exceptions, there has been at least one writer for every other character that did better than Stan Lee. Mm -hmm. At least one writer. Um, But I mean, at the same time, they're comic books. They're not like books. So I don't know how that would work. Yeah, I've never. Yeah, I've. Yeah, I've never done that before. Never, never gone down that road. But um, so Casino Royale is based on the first book, and uh, I've read that book twice now. Um, I read it right after I saw the movie, and then I read it again a few years later. Um, and the movie, well, I'm pretty, uh, pretty close to the book. Like it follows the book really well. Uh, um, other than the obvious that modern, it's not modern, the 50s, modern yeah. updates yeah. for it. Yeah, but other than that, it follows the book really well, even to the point where Lashif, Lashif still does the ball whacking thing on him in the book. Really? Yeah. That's in the book. Yeah, that's in the book. And um, you know, also I... Lashif dies early in the book, and Bond continues dating Vesper. The difference is Vesper in the book kills herself, whereas in the movie... Well, technically she kind of does kill herself in the movie. Because uh, okay. if you think about it, you know Bond dives in the water in the, into that uh, house. Yeah, you know, and he's trying to get the cage open, and she basically kind of touches him like, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I love you, and then she pushes herself back to the back of the to the elevator yeah, thing, that's true. and then she basically takes a big gasp of air. So in a sense, she that, really did kill herself. That's true. Although in the book, it's premeditated. She wrote a note and everything. So that that's the difference. Okay, and killed herself with pills. She was so guilty about. Being a double agent to Bond, because Bond is so amazing that she just had to kill herself. <laughs> <laughs> like, pretty corny, but, <laughs> like, you know, give me a break. Whatever. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but even in the in the book, even then, like, Lashif dies fairly early in the book, just like he did in the movie. Now, and how does he die in the book? Does he get shot in the head? Like yeah, he, he gets shot. He, he gets shot by, in the book, there. Um, now, is there a Mr. White in the book? No. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, no, uh, in the book it's uh, and it's not Spectre. Obviously, it's not Quantum. It's not Spectre in the book. In the book, it's uh, the Russian sh- uh, Smirch, uh, uh, actual Russian agent, the Soviet agency that kills Lashiv, and that's who Lashiv is working for. But um, they didn't add Spectre. I think. S- I think Spectre came in either when they created the movie. Did they? Because well, I know. See, I know. I know. Doctor No is the first movie, but it's not necessarily the first book. I think Doctor No is the first book with Spectre, but the reason, the reason why he changed it to Spectre in the book was because he knew that one of his books was going to be made into a movie. It wasn't decided yet. So he wanted to make up a criminal organization that wouldn't um, anger Russian moviegoers or whatever. So like he, so even back then, like we we complain about how like Iron Man with the Chinese movie, like oh the Mandarin's not even Chinese, and it's like they've been doing this since the fifties. Like I mean, but um, movies have anyway. But yeah, so more or less, he knew one of his books was going to be made into a movie, so he started using Spectre. Um, but yeah, Doctor No is the first book with Spectre. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it follows uh, the Casino Royale follows the book very well, and I think that he's actually the closest. Either he or Timothy Dalton is the closest to the character in the book. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the in the book he's very much he's not like the Sean Connery type at all. Huh. Like Sean Connery kind of did his own thing with it and created something more likable, I guess. Um Well, I know Roger Moore's take on it was is more not necessarily I want to say campy, but it's, it's campy. It, it's but um yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying, yeah. 
Um, actually, speaking of Roger Moore, if I can find it, he has a... Um, let's see. I believe I heard him say at one point in an interview, uh, Roger Moore does not like firing guns. So that was one of the biggest things he had to overcome in those, oh, really? movie, in those movies was 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 basically learning how to shoot a gun without wanting to always close his eyes. Yeah. He said yeah. that's the reason why you, sometimes you see a lot of times when they fire, he fires a gun, as soon as he starts to fire it, they quickly cut away. It's because he kept, really? he kept not wanting to keep his eyes open for whatever huh. reason. Well, uh, have you ever fired a pistol? Yes, I have. Yeah, the recoil is... The recoil is more what bothers me, not necessarily yeah. the, 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 the pulling it. It's just yeah. the recoil. Yeah, I, I've I've fired one or two guns that got a hell of a kick. I'll yeah. tell you what, I don't see how some of those people stand there like they do with it butted up right against their shoulder and 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 just boom 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 right off you know without without flinching a bit because yeah. uh, a, a friend of a friend of ours uh, that my wife and I know he has a a uh, I believe it's an AK forty seven. Hmm. Uh, he 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 only has it because he was able to purchase it for whatever reason he's 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 an avid hunter no he uses that thing more or less just uh, every once in a while for target fire and yeah. he's, he's let me fire it once yeah. and that thing's got a hell of a kick oh yeah i bet oh I my bet. god i mean that that's that i mean <laughs> the funny thing is uh, uh I've, I've shot uh a 22 rifle and a handgun mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the handgun trying to shoot something up close i can't hit a a barn if it was standing right in front of me no. but you put me behind that rifle and put beer cans on a rock that's you know a mm-hmm. quarter mile away i can pick out the beer cans oh, all yeah. day long oh, yeah. they're much more accurate I, I i don't know why i i can't i can't hit a damn thing in front of me well the uh <laughs> well speaking of roger moore and daniel craig when um when uh, i've got a quote right here when casino roy al came out Roger Moore wrote an op-ed, and he wrote, Daniel Craig impressed me so greatly in his debut outing, Casino Royale, by introducing a more gritty, unrefined edge to the character that I thought Sean might have to move over. <laughs> Craig's interpretation was like nothing we'd seen on screen before. Uh, Jimmy Bond, I don't know why I called him Jimmy, Jimmy Ball, Bond was earning his stripes and making mistakes. It was intriguing to see him being... Casta- uh, castigated by M, just like a naughty schoolboy would be after his headmaster. The script showed him as a vulnerable, troubled, and flawed character. Quite the opposite to my Bond. Craig was, and is, very much the Bond Ian Fleming had described in the books. A ruthless killing machine. It was a Bond, it was a bond the, that the public wanted. So impressed was more that he chose to buy the DVD. <laughs> he spent twenty bucks. He liked it so much. <laughs> I, I, I hope he could afford that. Yeah. Well, um, see, 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 they tried to go with a more realistic Bond when they did the Timothy Dalton ones, mm-hmm. but the public just wasn't ready yeah, for that. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. I for mean, it. after all those years with Connery and then and Roger Moore, they just that was just something. I actually liked Timothy Dalton. He, I, don't, he, I think I, the movies were. I I don't think I I also don't think they had the story that no. the, that uh, Casino Royale had. Like not at all. No. Um. I mean, I mean, those movies are okay, but they're not on my list of ones to watch if I'm wanting to yeah. watch a Bond movie. They're both right in the middle for me. Like out of the entire film, like they're both like pretty much right in the middle. Like um, it. I'd usually rather watch something else, but um. <laughs> But I I think that if they didn't have the the legal problems that they did at the time and kept the series going, I I think that he would have eventually gotten a good third movie out of it. Yeah, like I I think that he would have eventually fit into that character. But um, so we talked about Casino Royale. Let, let's actually skip over to Spectre. This is the main course. We had a little ap- appetizer. Um. You know, Spectre, spoiler alert, uh, Christoph Waltz plays Blofeld. You know, you think after hearing what Paramount, well, not necessarily Paramount, but with what Abrams did with Into Darkness. Yeah. Saying that Cumberbatch's character was not Khan, yeah. kept denying it in all the interviews, and then the movie comes out, oh, look, he is Khan. But they didn't do that with Blofeld. Yeah, but I read... They said, at- no, they said... Uh, they said that he is playing uh what it what was it the the name of the the name of his alias 
that is actually from the books. That's his alias in the books. So they told the truth. Huh. They they totally they completely told the truth. I I I, mean, I wish I, I would have wrote it down. Uh, Blofeld's cause, alias. Because I read I read one of a few things where they they were it sounded like they were denying he was Blofeld. Yeah. So uh, well, they did they did the Iron Man three thing where they actually told the truth. It, they just kind of tricked. It, they just kind of tricked you. But uh, yeah, like uh, what was actually? Can you pull that up? What was the Blofeld's alias? Blofeld's alias. Yeah. Uh, you have to give. Me I guess minute. it doesn't matter. But um, um, yeah, that was from the books. So yeah, like anybody who like had already known that offhand was like, oh yeah, he's Blofeld. <laughs> like. So I thought that was great. I actually think the movie was great. I um, I know like it did feel a little bit like Khan or like or like the Mandarin. Like we, like we are starting to do these weird plot twists that it's a weird like meta plot twist almost. Like they did it with Khan, they did it with Mandarin and Iron Man three, where it's like it's a plot twist, but only for people who are already aware of the story you know what i mean like they're like well actually they did it in the dark knight rises with talia and robin okay like that i think that's the one that started it like where they're doing these weird meta plot twists where like on the dark knight rises it's like oh my god she was talia all along well the regular movie public is going to be like who's talia like it, it's a very strange trend that's going around where it's a plot twist but only for the established fans like hmm. it, it's pretty bizarre like all four of those movies do that well I, I i think i think a lot of movies here in the last i don't know maybe last decade maybe even longer have been given a lot away with their trailers yeah and and i think really i think movie fans would love it if they'd start going back to doing what uh disney's doing with force awakens mm-hmm. give you just enough to make you interested in the movie but not give a damn thing away. Well, see, you know, I didn't really pay attention to anything with Spectre. Uh, like, I saw the trailer. Uh, but they didn't To me, the trailer looked just like, uh, it's, he's, like, shooting stuff. They didn't really give anything away with that, either. Yeah. They're starting and, to get better at that. And I think I think that's what the movie... movie th- Because what, what really irritated with me was... Um, uh, did you see Terminator Genesis? No. I, I won't okay. see it, but I, I, I did see the trailer. And I, I watched it, and to me, the biggest plot twist they really should have kept secret, they put in the trailer. Yeah, I saw that in the trailer. Yeah, I was like, I, well, I, there's I, no I, reason to see I, this. I'm not going to sit there and say it in case anyone hasn't potentially seen it or waiting to watch it on, on, on Blu-ray since it's now out, but, you know, it's like, why would you put that in your trailer and give that interesting plot twist away? I mean, to me, that's something you'd want to keep people in secret of. So when they, when, when they would go see the movie, they'd be like, oh, shit, I didn't see that one coming. Based on the marketing, I don't think that they were too confident in that movie in the first place. So that's probably why they did it. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't see it, and I probably won't see it. It doesn't look that good. Was it? What, what, what would you give it? Like a C rating? It's... I'll, I'll give it a. I'll give it a. I'll give it a B minus. B minus. I'll wow. give it a B minus. All right. Fair enough. Taking it for what it is. Okay. Okay. If if if, but if already you're like giving it excuses. Taking well, it for no, what it no. Is. Well, what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, I, I, I say B minus based on if you've seen the first Terminator, first two Terminators by James Cameron, mm-hmm. and then you ignore the Rise of Machines, and you and you ignore the one that Christian Bale did, you throw those two out. And then you just focus on the first two, and then you see Genesis. Genesis makes sense. Okay, all right. It, it, it's what they did because on the I, I watched. I, I finally watched it on on Blu-ray here last week. Mm-hmm. I didn't go see the theater, and James Cameron was actually kind of somewhat behind it and and kind of somewhat involved a little bit in in with it, and he approved of the story. No. Yeah. And he 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 says it's more really a true sequel to the first two movies than what the other ones have been. Really, so it's it's an interesting plot twist. It's not it's not a bad movie. Okay, right. it, it, it's it's different, and I think just because of what it is, and I think some of the critics are kind of right. It's like how many times can these robots keep wanting to wanting yeah. to kill off mankind? I mean, it gets to the point of 
it, we kind of been there, done that already. Yeah. Yeah. But for what it is, it's not it's not necessarily a bad movie. All right, All right. It, it's definitely not it's definitely not Terminator One or Two quality. No, but it's not unwatchable. All right. Um, back not, to Spectre. <laughs> not um, to take you off course. No, you're fine. You're fine. We on our Iron Man podcast we yapped about uh, <laughs> South Park for a long time. So that's just the way these things work. Um, and that was definitely my fault. Um, in the, uh, I'm going to come out and say it. I think I on Rotten Tomatoes it's got like a high sixty percent. Oh, Spectre? Spectre does. It's like a 69 or something like that, which is like above average for a movie. It, it, like you don't think it's not the same thing as getting a D grade. Mm-hmm. It's actually above average for a movie. But I think people this were, movie deserved better than that. This is a good movie. I, I think I think a lot of the critics were, were expecting, Snooty. expecting something better than Skyfall. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't happen, so you still just appreciate the movie for I, what it is. I, I, I look like, at this it. This is a really good movie. I, I look at it as Skyfall was kind of their Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and but Spectre, this is not their Return of the Jedi. This it, is a good movie. It, it, it's it's <laughs> it, it, Spectre is kind of like a New Hope. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's it, it's better than Return of the Jedi would have been. It, but it's not. It, it, I think some people were just so See, so you know, so Casino lofty Royale goals and. Casino Royale and Skyfall Skyfall. both have this new, fresh feel. Right. Both of them did. And this one is a part two of Skyfall. And that's fine. And Skyfall left you... uh, It's kind of interesting when you look at the Daniel Craig movies because Quantum of Solace is part two of Of Casino Royale. Royale. This one's part two of Skyfall. Um, But the, the, the thing is, it's like... I mean, like Skyfall set you up for this movie Mm -hmm. like i mean it it does like at the end of the movie he blows up his house and you know there's some weird stuff that went on in that house like there's all sorts of like there's all sorts of secrets going on there even in casino royale like with mr white and all them it's like there's something going on i know initially they wanted quantum to be their new specter but they got the rise back to specter let's just make it specter you know i mean Mm -hmm. like these plot twists aren't just out of nowhere. Like, they were building up to this. Like, whether or not this is exactly what they were building up to is debatable. But, you know, they were building up to something. And I, the plot twist makes sense. Yeah. The whole thing with Blofeld makes sense. Uh, you know, Spectre may not have been as, uh, as I want to say, I don't know if this is the right term, action spectacular like Skyfall was. But it was still a good movie. Yeah, I mean, it was like still, Skyfall. It's Sam still, Mendes still entertaining. Sam Mendes has an eye for photography. Both of these movies, they have long shots of just like people looking at scenery and stuff like that. Which I know the internet makes fun of. The internet makes fun of everything. Those shots are beautiful. Like th- these movies are both beautiful to look at. Mm-hmm. Like both of them are. Um, now, did you think uh, Dave Bautista's character was a uh, uh, was it what's his Hinks, whatever it is? Yeah, you think he was underused or overused? I thought he was used just fine, neither under nor over. Okay. Um, what about you? Like, I didn't. I kind of would like seen maybe a little bit more of him. Yeah. You know, I, I was kind of maybe kind of you know want to see a little bit more because t- to me it's like we. I mean, you saw enough of him to a certain extent, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to see more. If he would have stuck around with Blofeld, maybe sort of maybe stuck yeah. around till at least not necessarily bought it until uh, uh, he, you know, after Blofeld had, had actually, you know, revealed himself to Bond, and then maybe you know was taken out after that. But speaking of which, that scene where Blo where um, where uh, Dave Batista crushes that guy's skull with his hands at the at the at the Spectre meeting. After that, and then uh, uh, Christoph Waltz is just like, boy, that was fun, wasn't it, James? Like, that whole scene is so creepy. Yes. Like, that is a that is a very intense scene. Um, very intense. Um, yeah. I, I... Now, the, now, I will say the, the, uh, the, the, the fight between him and, and, and Daniel Craig on the train, 
that was something. That, that was yeah, great. That was. That was good. Really good. Really good. Well, they, they used Dave Batista a lot, though, because remember, you know, not only that scene, but then there's that chase scene up in the Alps. Right. That And that's a good scene, too. So it just felt like, you know, he was used, but I, I, would, I think I would have liked to see more of him. Right. Yeah. You know, he, he wasn't necessarily, you know, and they didn't throw him in just because they could, but. Yeah, you just want them more. Like, I, just, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um, we, we haven't seen really good a lot of good henchmen in the, in the last several years. That's yeah, that you is know. True. I mean, we, we've gotten our, our main villain, but we haven't had a good henchman come along with the villain, and and it's kind of nice to see for the first that time. That is in a while. true, actually, because we've had Lashif, and we've had whoever the hell was in uh, Quantum of Solace. So, yeah, that, and then Skyfall, you had. Um, yeah, what's Javier his nuts? Rodin's right, which he Silva. played. It, he was amazing. But he would put it great, you know, bad guy. But you know, you, they really, yeah, you're right. They really didn't have henchmen in any of them, and they really didn't have too many henchmen in the uh, Pierce Brosnan ones either. Not that I'm aware of, that I can mm, think of. The first one had Famke Jansen. I guess the only other she hen- was like crushing people with her thighs. Well, I guess the only other henchman would have been the uh, Mister Stamper in the Tomorrow Never Dies. Because you had what's his face playing Carver, Elliot Carver, and yeah. then you had the quote the the Mister Stamper who was supposed to be a German guy who was I guess sort of I guess you could say a henchman. But well, and then um, and then uh, the world is not enough. Um, Electra was the main villain. Yeah, like that was more like a partnership Except than a henchman, henchman guy. Right. You have well, had- and then no, and then Die Another Day had the guy with diamonds in his face. So they all had it, and it had uh, and it had. Uh, What's her name? Rosamund Pike, as the girl. Right. Who, so yeah, they've all had I, henchmen. I guess. I guess. I guess they haven't been as pronounced as what uh, Bautista's character was on. Yeah. On, on Spectre. Well, they, that kind of. I mean, there. There you go. Like right there. Like that kind of shows how much better quality the this movie was than most of the Brosnan <laughs> movies, where like, you, like you feel like the henchman is underused, but you remember him a lot more than. Previous the, the the Brosnan movies where they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, no, I like the first two Pierce Brosnan movies. That's funny because I like the first and third. And you and I, we've talked about this before. We differ on that one. You like um, Tomorrow Never Dies. Tomorrow Never Dies. I like it, but I always felt like it was a little bit on the weird side. Like, which I is part of the appeal. I, I, I think I didn't, I didn't. I didn't feel it was weird. I, I, I felt he played. I thought Brosnan and, and Tomorrow Never Dies was had that right, at least for the way he portrayed Bond, had that right amount of Bond yeah. with the right amount of kind of funness to it in yeah. a certain sense. Yeah. But it wasn't necessarily Roger Moore right. campiness in right. a certain sense. And and it, he seemed like it, it, it was an enjoyable Bond to watch, yeah. for me at least. Yeah. And see, I like I like the third one. I like the whole thing with M getting kidnapped and all that. I thought that was a good story. Now I cannot defend um, uh, Denise but, Richards. Oh, that. oh she yeah. is such a bad actress. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't even know. Like, you know, I thought she was like she was. She's fine in like bubbly action stuff. Like, I liked her in uh in uh, Starship Troopers, which I just finished reading the book, and it's it's worth a read. It's interesting. Um, I liked her in that movie, and I, I've liked her in, like, bubbly stuff, because that's really what she's good at. I mean, mm-hmm. she's not really a playing, good actress. Playing a Bond girl was not her thing. No. It's, but, well, they could have made her something else than a rocket scientist. Like, you just it, cannot it, 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 believe I, I, that. I, I didn't. Wrap, I couldn't wrap my head around that one. And I'm not, and, and not because she's hot, but because <laughs> she just seems so dumb. Like, there's right. no way, like, or not, I don't even want to say dumb. It, it just... She's just not playing the part well. Like she's a terrible Bond actress yeah. or terrible Bond girl. Um, <laughs> I thought Electra was a good villain and Bond girl. Actually, I liked her. Um, but yeah, you know, um, you know, over the past couple years, you know, I I feel like, and I'm as guilty as of this as the next person, maybe more so. Like I've tried over the years to get away from this. But I, I feel like more and more, I think it started 
way back with Phantom Menace, and it's just gotten bigger and bigger over the decades, especially with this new hipster movement all of a sudden. I feel like um, people are being more cynical. Oh, oh, no doubt. Like, like they act like they know how to... Like, these movies that are coming out are awesome. Like, gr- you should have grown up in the 90s. Like, we're, t- we're having fond memories of the Brosnan movies. They sucked. Like, GoldenEye was the only good one. Really good one. Well, okay. I, uh, but, uh, okay, we all have our different... Uh, the only one I will definitely say is Die Another Day. Was oh, not was was not was, was not the best Brosnan movie. That, no, that, that no. one's terrible. Um, but I I shouldn't say they sucked. But comparatively to the to the oh to these they do suck. Oh, like, <laughs> I mean I mean Skyfall Inspector and Casino Royale can put even some of the Roger Moore and even maybe one at least one Connery Bond movie to shame in my opinion. Oh, a couple Connery movies like, but um. And not just Bond, like all the like the, like the superhero movies, like like Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, uh, the the action movies. Face Off, Face Off was considered a good movie in the nineties. That movie sucks. Like, and and I mean, I mean, like you guys got to remember what a bad movie is, and like these movies are really good, and everyone tears them apart. And okay, so three movies were that I thought were really good that um, seemed to have people um, cut down the seam are the dark Knight rises, which uh, you know what? I I'll agree. It's, it's the worst bat. It's the worst Nolan Batman movie. Um, the story takes a weird turn halfway through uh, the post apocalyptic Gotham is a little off. Like it doesn't think- feel right, but it's a good movie. Like they, I'll, I'll defend it. I, I, th- I think they tried too hard. They did. They did. And I think they were under a lot of pressure after after the Dark Knight. Yeah. Oh yeah. They were under an extreme amount of pressure, and 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 for what they what little storyline they kind of tried to do with Dark Knight Rises, I like that they tried to go there. Yeah. But I think it was a risk. It was a risk. But I think for the storyline they were trying to do, I think to me would be better in its own self. Self-contained, S- self-contained yeah. trilogy movie I of agree. its own, because because they basically tried to implement a little bit of that Nightfall, yeah, from the comics, and yeah. and I love the Nightfall series oh, was, comics, but I think that really deserves its really its own self-contained type of movie trilogy, and I mean it worked for what for what Nolan was yeah. doing because he took a little bit from everything from Batman, yeah. and he made it work, but I think he, I think there was just a lot trying to go on, they were trying to do with it, and. I mean, it's not a perfect movie, but it's a good movie. Uh, the next one, um, I mean, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Um, a lot to live up to. I really like that movie. Oh, um, it's a good movie. It's but, a really good movie. But but there's but, a few things though that I'll say are a little off. Like I mean, there's the, the pacing's a little off. Like they they have too much story going on, and pacing's a little off. That's fine. Uh, and then Iron Man three, which I think is a great movie. But I can understand if somebody says, you know what, I don't like the plot twist. I thought that felt cheap. Oh, I totally get it. I get it. <laughs> so, like, with all three of those movies, I will defend them to the end. But I, I, I do get the criticism. And I've made this I, movie, I do not get the criticism. Uh, Spectre, I don't. I, I, I I've don't, seen it twice, and I'm just like, and my you answer, guys are and, crazy. And my answer to that criticism would be is they were expecting skyfall or better and it's just not going to happen yeah and so give it a like if that's the way you feel give it a b don't act like it's like oh my god give it it's a bad worse. rating yeah it's it's like if i were to make a like if i were to list the james bond movies i'll tell you straight up um skyfall and casino royale would both be in my top five i can, I, can I can give you my I can probably give you my top five favorite movies of yeah. Bond, but necessarily, and I won't necessarily rank them. That right? In I mean, that's all they are. But yeah. But I, I would say Skyfall, uh, Casino Royale, uh, Goldfinger, mm-hmm. uh, For Your Eyes Only. Okay. Yeah. And then my other one would be. It's a. De- Bait. I I want to for me for me personally I I want I want to say either probably either Goldeneye or the, the Spy Who Loved Me. 
Okay. Uh, somewhere in there. Now, if oh, I wait, g- you put for your eyes only in the top yes. five. Yes. Okay. Interesting. I um, like that movie. It's it, a really good movie. It, it, it is a good movie. It's a simple. Yeah. yeah. It's a simple Bond movie. Yeah. It is. That one would be in my top ten. It, 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 it's a very simple Bond movie. It's not over pretentious. Yeah. They don't try and do some ludicrous luc- story idea like Moonraker. Yeah. Uh, Moonraker it is, it. Moonraker's okay for what it I is. I can't believe I'm saying this. This pun was not intended, but this movie brought James Bond back down to earth. <laughs> I mean, probably, probably one of the worst campiest lines ever in a Bond movie is in Moonraker. Which one? At the very end. I don't uh, remember. Dr. Goodhead. Oh, James, take me around the world one more time. Oh, God. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, it has to be Ugh. one of the worst, worst. I hate Moonraker. I one of the hate that worst, movie. worst pun lines, or however it is you want to Ugh, classify it, in, in ever. I mean, and there's some pretty bad ones in Bond throughout throughout the different movies, but that has to be one of the worst. Well, my top five is similar to yours. I'm not, I'm not going in any particular order with this, but again, it would be Skyfall. In again, no particular order of the top five, but Skyfall, Casino Royale. Goldfinger, From Russia with Love, and, you know, maybe um, maybe The Spy Who Loved Me. I really like that movie. That's a really good one. I'm going to say Spectre, Spectre might would, be number seven. Spectre would, honestly. Be, Spectre would be sitting on my outside of my top five. Yeah, it's, it's close. Like, that is a really good movie. Um, Six, seven, or eight, somewhere around there is where I'd rank it. Like it's a really good movie. How did you how did you interpret the end of uh, of Spectre? What do you mean? Like uh, okay, everything's all wrapped up. Yeah. Everything's all all nice and cozy. Q's standing there in his lab. All of a sudden, the doors open, and it's Bond that walks in. And then they he drives off in his dri- Aston Martin with the girl. It, it kind of off in the sunset. I really liked it. I think it does kind of... I know that there's still a possibility that they could bring Craig back for another one, although highly I think, unlikely. I think, I think he's technically signed to do another one. I'm not yeah. sure about that. But that doesn't mean he can't say, "No, yeah. I'm done. Um, I think that this... I think that that was a great ending. If this is where they want to end it, I think that was a great ending. Like I, I loved it. I, I, I think if if Spectre was Daniel Craig's last Bond movie, it's going to be because of Daniel Craig himself saying, "I'm done." Yeah, because I'm sure Eon Productions and all those people there would be more than happy to have him come back as, and do oh, another yeah. Bond movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think he's he's done he's done well for the franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to see him come back and do another one. Yeah, but I'd rather say. I'd rather see him come back and do another one because he wants to. Yeah, rather see, than, we don't need to make the same mistake that rather, Connery did by coming back. Rather than rather than do another one because a he feels pressure because the fan wants it, or he's just getting a huge ass payday yeah. and he's like, uh, fine, whatever. I don't want to see him coast through a, a, a movie and be like, oh god, he should have stayed away. Yeah. I mean, because he's done so well as Bond and brought such a persona to the character, which we really haven't seen since Sean Connery in a certain sense. Yeah, yeah. That I. I you know? it's, the Brosnan ones are weird because you see hints of it, but then they go away. Like, like they're they're odd movies. You saw a hint of him could have been a really good Bond movie, but they, I think, I think, I think Brosnan and and and, and the people behind Bond, I think, were having a little bit of creative differences. I think so, and I think that's the reason why after Die Another Day, you know, it was like, you know. Thanks, but we're going to move a different direction. I, I, I just kind of think there I've was... always liked Pierce Brosnan, but his movies just, I, I've never blamed him for those movies. Like, I, and I don't, I don't blame him necessarily for, uh, for Die Another Day. No, he's I, really good in that movie, I, I, I and just, that movie's garbage. I, 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 <laughs> like, I, I, I just think they just tried to bring too much of a of a Roger Moore campiness to it. Ugh. In that type of a in that type of a, of a movie, which which is funny because Goldeneye established that they were going away from that, right? You know, okay, if if you want to put like uh, Roger Moore in his prime and die another day, you might be looking at it in a, in a completely different 
you might look at that movie completely different because you think and thinking, oh, that's just the way Roger Moore is with Bond. You never thought a thing about it, but because with the way Brosnan had portrayed the first the first three times in his movies, it just it just. Well, didn't see, I don't seem even right. know if I agree with that because that that movie's so weird because the first twenty minute, ten twenty minutes of that movie are pretty dark. Yeah, you know. like a Roger Moore would never go that direction. Well, I, I mean, okay, after you get past the darkness part of it, but you, <laughs> you know, know what? what been... Like the first ten or twenty minutes of that movie are really good, and then it goes downhill fast, like so fast. Like <laughs> it, 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 to me, to me, that movie goes downhill once they hit the uh, the uh, ice, the whole ice scene. Wow, you you let it go further than I did. <laughs> For me, it's when they go to that place and like. Cuba or Florida or whatever that is, and they're doing the DNA transplant. I can I can overlook I that one. I cannot. I can I'm overlook sorry, that one. I know that there's stupid things in Bond movies. I cannot overlook a DNA transplant. Like that is a level of stupid that that I just the like, whole the whole, like that is the stupidest thing in the, the entire the, the whole the whole ice the whole ice hotel thing, and then the whole Icarus thing of of shooting the thing across, trying to chase Bond down in the car. In an invisible and, car. And, and, then, and, and then him hanging off on that jet thing and then taking those parachutes and making it like a surfboard. That's where the movie, to me, took a nosedive. You you really let it you really let it go longer than I do. Like well, I'm, cause, cause I'm done like right away. Because certain things like in the, bonds because to me certain certain plot issues in bonds you have to have almost a level of willing of letting your mind yeah. Go, okay, yeah, you know that's not technically really whatever, yeah. but it's Bond. Yeah. You're willing to overlook certain things. Yeah. So that DNA that you're complaining about, I was willing to overlook. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were. Like, I, I have friends that are like, it's not that big of a deal, dude. And I'm like, no, it's it's, it's so it's, stupid. I can't and, do and, it. And the I airplane can't. the airplane thing is not quite in the fight in the airplane where it's going down is not as is not as ludicrous as the ice house thing for me but mm. it, it, it's it's close yeah it's it's i mean because that really that plane should have just crashed and burned long, yeah you know <laughs> way before they got out of there um now see that movie would actually be in my see, bottom five hey halle berry that was a waste of her talents Halle Berry had now she played a good she played her part well yeah. but I just think wrong movie for I mean wrong time to be a Bond. Funny thing is, she and uh, Pierce Brosnan they played off well though. Great together they played off well yeah, together. They really do. Like it, it's not only a waste of his talent it it is a waste of her talent too. And I know she's hit or miss but she does her best in that movie. I, I think she does her best in, in, in those type of movies where... I think the of, only movie she did bad in was the first X-Men, and that one wasn't her fault. Like, well, I mean... It, it, they it, shouldn't it, have given her an accent. I mean, superhero movies. I mean, those are all a little bit... She was good in X-Men 2 and great in 3, uh -huh. which is the worst movie, but she was like... I loved her in X-Men 3. I was like, Halle Berry is such a badass in this movie. <laughs> but um, And she was really good in 2, although she had a small part. And, and not to... Uh, to derail the train off a of bond, but you're talking about, you know, uh, you know, not giving Spectre any sort of, you know, respect or just criticizing it. It's kind of like the same way what's happening now initially with, uh, here the last week or so when, uh, because, uh, it was announced that Star Trek Beyond is going to get its first trailer in front of the Star Wars movie. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So oh. it's going to open in front of the Star Wars movie, which is, which is fine. But some people, uh, there's one, <laughs> I read, one of the things I, I read said, well, it's just not a good time to be a Star Trek fan right now because with Star Trek, because it's still on that whole rebooted thing. And this guy who, who, who wrote this particular article obviously is not a fan of the rebooted whole thing. And it's like they're already bashing that movie before it even of course. hits because, you know, and they've got new screenwriters, a new director. The only thing Abrams is doing is producing it. So they've basically turned over the entire production staff in a certain sense hey sorry nerd the uh the new the star trek reboot was really good so get over it yeah like, a lot I, of people I really mean, like I, it it brought i it's one of those things where th this one is almost more understandable to me though the because uh, star trek is one of those things like you know when you're like a when you're like like a lot of people who are like sports fans or a lot of people who like a certain like rock group, like alternative rock group or whatever that's not super famous. Like all of a sudden when when the rock group starts getting popular, 
they're like, uh, oh, they're pop now. Like there's their stuff is so lame and yeah. Or like or like if you're a sports fan, a lot you see a lot of sports fans go, Oh, now that they're winning, everybody's on Jumping the bandwagon. On bandwagon. And, yeah. And it's the same thing with Star Trek. It's like, yeah, now that they're like like and it you know, I mean, they're not wrong. Like they are making it broader they are giving it a broader appeal and if, and if we've talked about it before on uh, i think yours and mine mm-hmm. you can't you can't you can't do old school star trek and have it succeed i don't think so i, I don't mean, think so I mean, they could now they can go a little bit closer in that direction now they they could but, do some improvement and yeah. bringing what made star trek star trek back into it but you still need some of that flash and dash that the first two rebooted movies have done in order to keep audiences attention now i'm also going to say the trekkies that hate the uh reboot uh put in are... your damn dvds and watch the old school well yeah that that's yeah but they're also <laughs> uh they're also complete idiots they're because they're close-minded well no they're they're only thinking of like they're not even thinking about um the fact that the original series is dumb. Like, it's just as dumb as these movies. It's loud and dumb and people getting shot all the time. And, well, like, it was I, the next generation I, I think, where I they think, started getting I think smarter. Some of, some of these people that are complaining are wanting that what Roddenberry would do make people think. Yeah. Social issues and a way of doing it, but in a Star but Trek way. he didn't way. even do that until, like... like the next, the the original series is pretty stupid. Like I know it's like ooh, like a white and black guy, a, a black girl and a white guy kiss. You but know, it's like they weren't they weren't any more like socially aware than Twilight Zone, which was way more socially aware I, at the time. I, and the only reason I brought all this up was just yeah. because you know people are so quick anymore to sit I there know. and go. Yep, it's gonna suck. I know, and it's like dude, and you guys see the don't. Movie first. You guys don't even know it sucks. Star Trek Five sucks. Star Trek One sucks. Star, Star- Trek Five <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Star Trek Nemesis sucked. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a list of yeah, yeah. There's a list of movies that suck. And if we're going back to Bond, Octopussy sucks. Diamonds Are Forever sucks. Moonraker sucks. Die Another Day sucks. <laughs> Those movies suck. Oh, well, and like for me, you guys don't know Mag- on her Majesty Secret Service for me sucks, but that's just my opinion. I just don't like. Ooh, that's going to be for. We're going to talk about a little bit. We're not going to talk about that one on this one. <laughs> that one is, um, and I, I'm not like. Don't get me wrong. Like I totally understand where you're coming from on that. Uh, we're, that'll be on our part two. Okay. Um, we'll we'll talk a little bit about all of them, and we'll 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 talk about on her Majesty's Secret Service a little bit. That one is an interesting one. It really is. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll, it's I'll, it's not in my top five I'll, by I'll, any means. I'll say, my, uh, I'll say my, what I'm thinking for your second part then because <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for no, you. No, yeah, you're fine. And, uh, like, I'm probably going to agree with what you say too, which is the funny part. Um, now, see, I, I, I know. Um, well, already even Crack.com is, like, top six reasons why Star Wars is probably going to suck. And it's, like, Cracked. You guys used to be funny. Come on. Um, I'm sorry. This 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 Star Wars movie is going to make money it's hand gonna over be fist. Amazing. Hand it's o- going to be an amazing hand movie. over fist, regardless of whether or not it's great or it's Phantom Menace, whether it's an Empire Strikes Back type of Star Wars or it's Phantom Menace Star Wars. And what do you gonna, think it's going to be? It, it, it's going to sit there and make money hand over fist. You regardless. know what? It's probably going to be just as good. It's probably going to be almost as good as Empire Strikes Back. Who knows? Maybe better. And fans will still be like, "This sucks. I don't like this." Well, the only way, only way this movie could possibly suck is Kylo Ren unmasks himself and it's Jar Jar. That might make it awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, and he's like, "Oh, Misa, I'm gonna kill you, son." Yeah, that'd be the only way it would really suck. But then we don't have to worry about that particular part because Lucas didn't make the movie. Ah, I finally learned it to use of the Boomba. <laughs> and then it's use of the Boomba on them. That would be like the end. That Oh, like, oh my gosh, what a cliffhanger. <laughs> Jar Jar uses the Boomba. Anyway, uh, yeah, I... But I, I thought Spectre was amazing. Um, no, Spectre, Spectre is, a, is, is a good bomb. Sam movie. Mendes is such a good director. Like, he's got that eye for photography that's just and, and incredible. And he's, he's already said... He's he's done his two Bond movies. Mm-hmm. He's happy to have gotten to do a Bond movie mm-hmm. now too, but he's oh my gosh! And he I wants love, to go back to whatever it is he does in the past. You know, he wants I, to go back to smaller movies. I love that ending where um, 
Bond doesn't kill Blofeld. Like, how, like... I'm sure people were mad about that, like, oh, he's going pussy on us. Well, I thought but, for like, for for, for, for a brief second, I really thought he was just Yeah, I just assumed he was going to, but, like, the fact that he didn't is like, all right, you're not worth it to me. Mm-hmm. You're going to go to prison for a long time. Now, I don't, know, the rest of your now I don't know if you want to go, go, go to where I'm thinking in this particular podcast or not, but let's go on the assumption that this was Craig's last Bond movie. Mm-hmm. I'm of the opinion. Let's say you get some other actor, whoever it may be, to take over the role. I personally feel they should just pick up basically where they they would normally go with Craig. Oh, and you just, think they should continue and, the and just, story and just continue Ooh. on? I mean, it's no worse than what they did with between Connery and 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 Roger Moore in a certain right. sense. I mean, they kind of just. You just all you did was change out the actor, and you just they just continued to tell the story. They didn't try and reboot it. I don't want to see another reboot. Let's yeah. say you know, let's say they bring out another Bond movie in 2018, and it's not Daniel Craig, assuming three years in between. I would rather just see the same the same M with uh, Ralph Fiennes, Money Penny, the Q. I'd re- I like where they've kind of gotten this all up to. I don't want to have to sit there and watch it all restart again. Right. I think that's been something that's been unique about Bond in its longevity history. The Bond actor may have changed out, but over the years, everyone else has always kind of stayed the same, and they just kind of plugged along. You with know? the exception of... With, with the exception of Bond. Of course, even... Well, with the exception of these... Well, they changed out prayer. M. They changed out M between, I think it was at, uh, either After the Spy You Loved Me or Moonraker, mm-hmm. or somewhere in there, they changed out M. But other than that, Money Penny stayed the same up through... Roger Moore's run. I mean, all these... What I do like about the Daniel Craig movies is that it was a hard reboot. Right. Like, I mean, like, I know there are some people that are like, well, I don't know. It might be part of the same story. It's like, it's not. Like, but, pay attention to the story. It's like, it's it has nothing... It, even though they kept Judy Dench, which is... Don't which get me wrong, great. she's great. But it is weird to, like, do a reboot but keep one of the actors. I, like, it's I, I, had, I, had no, I had no problems with that. You know what, though? If they did that with Spider-Man, if they, with this next re, with this next reboot of Spider-Man, if they brought back J.K. Simmons to play J. Jonah Jameson, I would be ecstatic about that. <laughs> like, I think it's okay. Like, if there's one actor that everyone universally loves, keep him. Yeah. Or her. In this case, I don't want to see. I don't want necessarily see another hard reboot of Bond after four movies. I think you're right. I think I, I, yeah, I really I think, think Eon right. Productions has gotten Bond into a nice place for the 21st century. They've got some good actors in in, in key roles. I'll, if this was Craig's last Bond movie, great. Thank you for playing Bond. You gave us a great run. Plug in a different actor and let's just move on. No, I don't. I don't want to see another reboot. That's interesting because because Bond's always been about you know even 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 when uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan came on I mean it was kind of a semi but they still referenced that was a kind weird, of in the past did, that too. was a weird one like it's like kind of a reboot but kind of not. not yeah I guess that's a soft reboot it was kind of a soft reboot but it 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 was still I mean now granted all the characters granted, had changed out because there was so much time in between yeah. and granted all the sequels to Goldeneye were just like. Pud stories, like no, or not pud stories, but uh, just kind of filler stories. Mm-hmm. Like they were just like, oh, he's on another adventure. Like they didn't, they didn't really keep a story going, which kind of worked in that regard. And, and, and I'm okay if, if it, all they do is change out Bond actors and everyone else stays the same, and it's just kind of a the old t- type of Roger Moore, where you know it's just a movie, but you know it, it doesn't continue itself on. But right. I, I, I just want to, I want to see the continuity stay for what it is for right now. Yeah. I think there's no need to to reboot it. That's the problem with a lot of these movie franchises anymore. Reboot, reboot, reboot when well, something yeah. doesn't work. And I think this is working. And I think all they need to do is swap out the actor. Well, and if they do do a reboot, they're going to have to do something. Think, that these think, movies have not been done before. Do, which is wait a few years. Like, you know, like... Because um, if you're you going to reboot Bond... Then don't give me another Bond movie till at least 2019, 2020. Right. Yeah, I make, agree. Make 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 the audience really be wanting a Bond movie again. But well, I don't think, like. Um, I I don't think that's going to happen though. No. I really think you're going to see. I, I my guess is my guess is they're going to wait. Give give Daniel Craig about a year. 
let him come off of whatever it is, let him go do some other project, whatever it is he's doing, come back to him, hey. You, Make our diamonds our forever. You know, do you really want to come back? Are you done? You know, you're not going to hurt our feelings one way or the other. Find out what his mental status is about Bond at that point in time. If he's willing to come back, great. If he's not, say, okay, thank you, and, and just l- let's just move on. Uh, you now, know, if they bring him back, do you think they should do a return of Blofeld? I think you can still employ the Spectre thing. You don't necessarily have to have Christopher Waltz in it. I think I think you can still say, or I if you do, really you like can have him a cameo him. and maybe yeah. put him in the end somewhere. I would really like to see him again. However, like I don't know, I just felt like this movie like had such a good ending. I I I almost don't want a or, sequel. You know, like or, it's well, or if nothing else, you could always do a story and at the very end, you know, have some end credit scene where yeah. you put you know, him in there. You could always have little with, without necessarily having it feel like it's a continuation, but you know it's, hey, that's Blofeld. You know, he's he's still... He's... One of my favorite scenes in this movie is when um, it's, it's like kind of a comedy, or it's just kind of a jokey scene, but when he's in that uh, hotel with her I don't know where, like, Mad- it was in Madagascar or something. I don't remember where it was. I apologize for that. But it was in uh, Le Americon or whatever that hotel was where uh, her father used to do as Mr. White Crap. And they were both drunk. Uh, she was passed out and he was drinking the rest uh. of that bottle. And then that rat comes in and he points the gun at the rat and he's like, who sent you? Why are you here? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, you know, like now I am gonna rate rank the um, the uh, Daniel Craig movies, and I think I think you're gonna agree with me on this. Skyfall, Casino Royale, Spectre, Quantum of Solace. Yes. And Quantum of Solace, I, you know, I, I want to watch all four of them. Like, when this comes out on Blu-ray, I'll watch all four of them. I've only actually watched Quantum of Solace twice. I don't really care for that one. I'm hoping that maybe now that, like, the stories come full circle, it might add something to it. Sort of like what Avengers did with Iron Man 2, where, like, once you see Avengers, it's like, oh, okay, Iron Man 2 is better now. Um that said, Iron Man two. Even when I didn't like it, I still thought it was better than Quantum of Solace. See, now Iron Man two is one of my wife's favorite Iron Man movies. Yeah, a lot of people actually. I know a lot of people that really like it. Yeah, um, it's just, it, it's it, more lighthearted. See, and, and I'm almost willing to put maybe just just by a, just a touch, almost put Iron Man two over Iron Man three. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why I would say that is because of what they did with 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 right. the, the Mandarin yeah. and pulling that Trevor crap, yeah. which we've discussed before. Yeah, it just irritates me enough to want to yeah. say you're under Iron Man two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know some people don't some people don't like that uh, twist. I it took me two viewings before I decided that I was on board with the twist. Now, now two or three viewings. I'm not as I'm not as upset with it if if maybe down the line they come back later on. Even if it's with a different actor playing Iron Man, maybe revisit, find out Trevor really is the Mandarin, and they yeah. fix it. Hey, I'm cool. <laughs> but see, I, I kind of feel don't think like they if, will do that though. Well, I kind of feel like if they do that, like Disney, like like that's just Marvel, like copping out and being like caving into the fans. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't think they should do it. I I think it's like they did one wacky thing that no one expected. You see, and I was looking it for It didn't the, work for everyone. I, I was, too. I, I was Don't looking, get me wrong. I was looking for the fight of my life with, with Stark wrong. having a real hell of a battle with with him and, 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 I thought and it was, consciousness. Well, and, well, the now that is a trailer that that no one... Like, it even... To be fair, in the trailer, remember, he's like... He, he even says, you'll never see me coming in the trailer, which is, like, the biggest middle finger to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I... Which, in a way, like... Like, I guess I'm a cynical person, because in a way, like, that is so funny to me that I love it even more. See, it's was, like, man, you guys really pulled the wool out over everyone. See, I was, I was looking, because the way that trailer set up... And for what I was expecting to go well, in, it looked like it was going to be like I was, Dark Knight. I was looking for the Mandarin to be, uh, like you just said, like the Joker. Like, yeah, you know, Iron, Tony's 
Tony's Joker. Yeah, I was I was I was looking for that kind of of a of, yeah. a, of a of a of a movie and battle and head games. You know, I was looking for that whole thing and. But I guess There's, we've seen that movie, and it's called The Dark Knight. Nah, and it probably would have been better. But but still, you, you, anyway, I, yeah. we're getting no, a, I way off a of bond. We here. are. Um, I think, like we've done our ranking. I think uh, this is going to be good for this okay. show. Uh, um, um, I don't know if you want to answer this question now or sure. or, 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 or your it. next one. Go for it. How would you rank the actors playing Bond? Oh, um, or would you rather say that? No, we can do that now, um, and we'll do it again on the next one. Um, <laughs> probably, I really like now Craig a lot, but I'm, I'm still going to give Connery number one. Like he is Bond. Now, if you don't don't rank L- Lazenby, I can understand because I mean, well, he's still he's bo- he's bottom. Like he might as well, well rank him. Like there <laughs> there's no other place to put him. He, he's bottom, um, bitch. <laughs> um, but I would say probably Connery, Craig. Oh, this is hard, actually. Um, I, I I would almost put more above Pierce Brosnan just because of his longevity. Yeah, that's actually tough. I either that or they kind of they're close. I actually okay, just as the actors, I would put Brosnan over more. Now, more has better. More has some better movies. Mm-hmm. So it just depends. So let's tie. I'm going to tie them because it just kind of depends on how you look at it. Like I, Brosnan is a better actor and he is a better James Bond, but more Roger Moore has better movies. Uh, then Timothy Dalton. I don't think Timothy Dalton had enough of a shot to make it his Tim- own. Timothy Dalton Dalton really got stuck playing Bond at the wrong time. He did. Yeah. He did. I think he would have if if they would have given him one more movie. Well, if they he didn't would have, have all good. the legal issues yeah. that cropped up Cause after the second because he knew it was well, going to be six years. Well, so. well, I don't know if anyone knew it would be six years, well, but even the time it got around to being able to make more movies, it was just it didn't make sense to bring him back. Yeah. I mean, um, he's a really good actor. Um, I've seen him in other movies. He's a really good actor. Um, I think he would have really been a good James Bond, but. That said, he's still number five. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough choice between Brosnan and Moore. Um, like I said, I like Brosnan better, but I like the you Moore movies better. You almost have to rank Moore because really, technically, Moore is the one that had really succeeded, had had really had to succeed Connery. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, Lazenby was in between yeah. Connery's what was everyone thought was his last movie, and then came back to do another one. But still, yeah. I mean. I mean, Roger Moore was really more stepping into Sean Connery's shoes than, any, than anybody. So, because uh, he has some bad movies, he does have some bad movies. He has some really good movies, but he has some really bad ones. See, my, see, my wife really likes a, a View to a Kill. Oh, I do too. I, I do too. I, I'm kind of I'm on the I'm on I'm on the fence on that one. I mean, it's okay, but I guess the reason why I don't really care for that movie as much is I've never really been a big fan of. Uh, the guy who played the villain. Christopher Walken, really? I never. I don't know. Something wow. about him has always annoyed you me. You don't like the way he. Something about him has just always annoyed uses me. A period. After every couple words. So, something about says. something about him has just always annoyed me. No. And I didn't like him in Batman Returns, the second by Michael Keaton. Batman. Well, that character was out. Uh, we, that we character anywhere. was useless. Like right, like it, but it didn't add anything. But still, I, I've just never really cared for him in anything he's really done. It's what just about like Saturday Night Live and his cowbell for uh, Blue Oyster Cult? Like, that was I, funny. I haven't seen that one. We so. need more cowbell. <laughs> anyway, he's just annoyed me as an actor. I mean, I'm sure the guy's nice as hell and everything, but... He has a lot of cats, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere, but um, I'm going to leave it right, Well, that's going to that's gonna end for this one. Uh, be sure to check out our next one we're going to continue talking about james bond we're going to go over more of the history of bond in the next one so basically true believers will return yes true <laughs> believers will return in true believers part seven or whatever it is. <laughs> there you go have a good night